I am unashamed. What about you? So the coffees is you hear it finishing in the you know we we like uh you know dogs come by and bark yeah you know, our podcast <laughs> you never know what's going to happen yeah, so good. what what has happened today dad is that we have two of my very dear friends uh, Ann and Fellum uh, who uh, are here as uh, what do you call it, election refugees? We're, election? That's what we are. That's right. We escaped Los Angeles. <laughs> so so let's start there. So obviously uh, last night we have an election that we don't know the results of, which is kind of expected, I guess. And it's unfortunate. I mean, Trump tried to make yeah. a push at the end, like, let's get this thing done, motivate people. But as we've all surmised, there, there's probably sinister forces at work, you know, to try to steal as much as they possibly can. So you guys are from Ireland, mm-hmm. which our audience will, will pick up quickly when you start talking. Uh, we, were, we were eating dinner when you first got, guys first got here, and so this, the woman who owns the restaurant comes up, Dad, and she's like, She's meeting, and I said, these are my friends, you know, they're from L.A., but by way of Ireland, you know. And so they start talking. She says, what? What? Who, what? <laughs> She's getting about every yeah. third word, yeah. I think, that you guys were saying. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so you're in L.A. now. You live on, uh, on Venice Beach, and it, it's beautiful where you guys are. And um, I came out. We rode bikes last sure. time we were out there. <laughs> but you almost killed me. But uh, so, so tell us why you're in Louisiana um, because we just did your podcast as well. So, so what what caused you guys to reach out to us? You know, a month ago. Well, I think we didn't. We you know we didn't want to be on our own on election night. We wanted to be with friends, and we could have gone to friends in Los Angeles. But the problem was, everyone said, "But you can't come home. You won't be able to drive back home from wherever you are in Los Angeles if, because if, if Trump if Trump wins, particularly, then there'll be these riots." So we yeah, just thought. So, and by the way, everyone's and everyone we know was leaving Los Angeles. They were finding somewhere to shelter it for the election. It sounds like a Mad Max movie. Yes. <laughs> no. no, that's exactly <laughs> correct. It, it, it is exactly, exactly correct. correct. And by the way, when you know during those BLM riots that happened during the summer and stuff, I mean, that's exactly what it was like, by the way. Santa Monica. You Armed know. groups. Yeah. And marauding people around. And marauding. Says, but Phelan, yeah, Phelan says, the looting that went on in Santa Monica, it was, it, was, it was really frightening. I have to say, I was over in Santa Monica for the looting. And there is something so shocking about a shop that has been looted. Because you see all the shelves and the few things left. And you realize there was so much here. And this was somebody's dream. And they, and they, they went to all this effort of the shelves. And beautiful and beautifully, decora- so, beautifully <laughs> decorated. <laughs> but you talked about Marauding and Mad Max. So we have a friend who lives up in Hollywood. Uh, and Hollywood it, it, it was a bit downtrodden. But it's, 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 it was coming back. But during the summer, there was no office staff because everyone was working from home. There was no tourists, which is, was a lot of Hollywood. The only people who were there were homeless who've had 30 years of too much drugs and alcohol and BLM rioters. And you're literally in a wasteland of Hollywood. And it is, it, it, it's just a, it's, it's, it's a stressful place. It's a place where you're not drive. You don't want to go to someone's house in the evening because you don't know if you'll get back. Uh, because there are groups blocking streets. And that was the thing. And it was only... Al, how would you like some of that? Oh, my goodness. It's just... It's hard for us to imagine. You yeah, know, and we're f- still here, and we don't know who the president is yes. yet. No, it's not good. It's, Al, I'm just... And I think the longer that goes, yeah. the more possible, likely, that you're going to start seeing this. Where you Because know, all it takes is one group to go out in the street one night, and then it just it's like a yes. contagion yeah. you know, across the Yes, country. Yeah, that's it, a social contagion. I mean, and I don't want... People might think we're exaggerating, but I grew up in Northern Ireland. I know what a riot looks like. I know what c- civil it's disturbance civil, yeah, exactly. looks like. And, you know... And I, I always I hate it when people exaggerate, and I hate it when yeah. people say you know, and especially in politics, there's a lot of rhetoric. This we voted with our feet, you know. We were we could we felt we could not go, we couldn't invite someone to our house for the election, and we couldn't go to someone's house. So the them. the peaceful protest, it's not su- it's not 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 uh, not that peaceful, not that peaceful. No, yeah. no, no, and uh, and and to be honest, it's only if it was only if Trump was winning. That we would be fear. Uh, it's very funny. I, I play football with a bunch of guys, you know, international soccer, as you people call it. And uh, uh, you know, one of the guys. I remember one of the guys said, "You know, there's going to be riots if if Trump loses." And I'm looking at him, going, "Like, no, no if Trump loses." 
people are going to, conservatives are going to get up and do their podcasts or go to work or do whatever we do and talk about it and feel upset or sad or feel tomorrow is yeah, another day. Yeah, but we're day. not going to spit the dummy and act like children who didn't get their way. We're not going to do that. We what, didn't what's, do your, it. what's your saying, Dad, that the, the one thing you'll never do, you can count on? I'm never walking out on the street in a city with a stick with a sign on it. <laughs> I'm not going to do that, ever. Yeah. I don't care how bad it gets. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, and it, Which just is interesting because obviously everybody has a right to protest, and you know they did when they started the country, but... You're right. Most of us look at it like we don't want to destroy our society. Yeah. We, yeah. You just mentioned it. We have dreams. People have dreams. Yes. They have businesses. They yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. most of them are immigrants. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And, yes. and minorities. Yeah. I mean, it was so James cr- Madison said, "You have the right to peaceably assemble." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Peaceably. Yeah. You start burning, looting, shooting. No. It, it's and that's why. The news media says, "Well, most of it, most of it is peaceful, right?" No. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah, mostly but, peaceful. With, with yeah. the burn, with the burning building in the background. Just ten percent of us burned the thing down. <laughs> I know. I mean, ninety percent of us, we didn't. But and one of the awful things they had as well in LA and in the shops near us, where they put the they put the barricades up and they'd write, "Black owned business." As if, as if to say, by the way, well, if the, if the business is owned by white people, anything's you know whatever you need to do, you know. Well, you, you know what Churchill Churchill described appeasement and you, I'll, 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 I'll Louisiana this um, <laughs> I can't wait this, to hear the, the fellow this, Louisiana yeah. yeah so Churchill said uh, uh, appeasement is feeding an alligator hoping he will devour you last he said a crocodile yeah it's feeding a crocodile hoping he'll eat you last and this black owned business and it's 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 and and these companies that who I mean you know universal they, they stopped their bonuses for all their staff this year. And, and, and L.A. is an expensive city. Yep. And the people need these bonuses to survive. No money because of the pandemic, but they give $100 million to BLM. It makes right? no but, sense to me. It's, well, it's, it's, it's appeasement. It's feeding the crocodile, right. uh, hoping that they'll, they'll, that they'll... They'll save you for last. Yes. Let's see <laughs> if this makes sense to you Irelanders. <laughs> Mark this. That means... Don't forget this. Mm-hmm. Write this down. Mark this. Get ready for that. Mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, what do they call them? Cancel culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Slanderous, without self-control, <laughs> uh, brutal, uh, hmm, not lovers of the good, treacherous, <clears throat> rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, have nothing to do with them. Stay away from them. That was written... 2,000 years ago. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You reckon he was on to something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just a description. And you know, it's, it's perfect. I mean, pretty amazing. Yes. You read a 2,000-year-old yeah. writing, What's and you're the, like... What is the so, reference? What, where is that? Where is it? That's Second Timothy chapter 3. So, And he's talking to a young man, Timothy, and describing this setting, because remember, they were mostly reaching out to Greeks you know, in their mm-hmm. culture, and so they were going to these places, and that's exactly what they were seeing. I mean, he, he describes them brute beast... You know, talking about these people from these different islands that they were visiting. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. Mm -hmm. So you say, Hmm. what we have here. I've seen a bit of that. So Dad's first book, uh, The Theft of America's Soul, we, we, when we started with that concept, that was the the, the one you just quoted. That was our mindset Mm because it was right after Trump had gotten elected. And we were seeing this just straight up lawlessness in yeah. the streets and all this stuff. And we, Dad and I are looking at each other and saying, we're seeing now a whole new thing, yes. you know, but then what we That's saw correct. before. That's correct. And so it was like, what is this? And so the deeper dive we did, of course, everything we do comes from a, a spiritual lens. Mm-hmm. So we based the book on the evil one and how that all the major institutions in America 
he was winning Mm -hmm. because of, you see, the development. It it was interesting, Dad, in that verse you said disobedient to parents, and that seems kind of out of place. You're saying, well, it's a disobedient child. But when you look at Antifa, it's pampered, white, yeah. rich kids yes. mm-hmm. that yes. are just throwing the biggest temper tantrum in the history of the world. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if it's against God, against their parents, or what it is, but it's that verse. One yeah. of the signs the little girls were carrying, I saw on the other day, somebody showed it to me, I don't have a cell phone. I never got around to buying a suit or a cell phone. <laughs> or a watch. If I ever need one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you I might was, be okay now. Somebody yeah, said, yeah. well, how do you tell time if you don't have a watch? I'm like... I would guess right now it's about on up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I came over here probably about a couple hours after daylight. Uh-huh. See, I, daylight, dark. We, we got we got lunch at some point, midday. Dinner time. <laughs> Thanks be to God. 12 o'clock. <laughs> so that way you, you don't have to worry about being, I'll meet you about dark at the gate. Or uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I do, but the lobby to be on up in the night now. Well, that's getting on up there, you know, one day at a night. That's one, two in the morning. You see what I'm saying? That's where like, we were like last the, night. I like the sound of that. I could see some, you know, just I could see some disadvantages to operating like that. You know, but, but, you know, we won't have to go into them right now. But, yeah, I'll see you around the time it gets dark. It's like. And for a long time, that's really how we functioned here. I mean, you know, now things have to be a little more on time because of uh, commitments. So I, I want to hear from you guys about um, sort of – so you're from Ireland, obviously, and you're journalists. You're yes. both journalists. So I want to hear a little bit about why you left Ireland and kind of what that process was like. Well, we left Ireland initially actually to for work. Uh, we went to Romania in Eastern Europe. Uh, I was a journalist. I, I covered Romania and Bulgaria and the Republic of Moldova for the Financial Times. Okay. Uh, and it was a very interesting time. Romania was coming out of communism. And so this was been early 90s? Uh, no. Uh, early 2000s. Okay. Early 2000s. Okay. Uh, it was coming out of the communism, but heading towards European Union membership and NATO membership and, you know, and, and prosperity as well. And, it, you know, we went there and I think, uh, you know, uh, as we're European journalists, so therefore we're liberal. Because there is no other, um, there isn't. You're not allowed to be a European journalist. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an unwritten rule uh, if you're, unless you're liberal. And we we ended up covering a story uh, about a gold mine in Transylvania. That's what, it's a great story. Yes, uh, Transylvania is a real place too. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, uh, and Dracula was there. Dracula was there. So it was this Canadian uh, mining company it was going to go and destroy a village, wipe it out, according uh, to Greenpeace, and pollute the waterways and, and destroy everything. Rape and pillage. Rape and pillage. <laughs> and so we, we went up there. We went up there in the train and, and the, you know, because it was Transylvania, I, we were all thinking about the the headline that have, would have to have vampire and sucking blood in it and all these metaphors. And we got up there and yes, the, the, the company was going to destroy a lot of the village, uh, but uh, two thirds of the village had no running water, right? So in Europe, in the year 2002, Two thirds of the people had outhouses, wow. right? And it gets cold there. And it gets cold there, minus twenty centigrade, which is like a, a, a million in Fahrenheit. I'm not sure. Just we, horribly we're, cold. We're still in European temperatures, uh, and we, we, the company said, "Yes, we're going to knock down your house that has no outside bathroom. Or there's no inside bathroom, but we're going to build you a nice house." And what they did was they built a model house in the middle of the village saying, this is what you can get. Would you like it? So people would come in, like, and it was the nicest place. So they go in, and we went in to the model house, and there standing in the living room of the model house was this 86-year-old woman crying. And we thought, excellent. Here's the story. We got a story. We the went evil over. Canadian. The evil Canadian. evil Canadian. With a crying old woman. Journalists are different. You do, journalists are different. When they see crying people, they... They, they get, get all ex- excited. They get all excited. <laughs> They're like Most really happy. people, when they see crying, people feel sad. We go, ooh, right? Excellent. Right. I've got Excellent. a story Most here. Most people have empathy. You guys are <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, we're the vampires, actually. What do you think about it? But yes. anyway, yes. so H- hang on, Phil. Let's take a quick break. One of our uh, early sponsors that's been with us the whole time, which we really appreciate our sponsors. I know, um, you know, People listen to podcasts. A lot of times people say, oh, you know, I hate that you guys have ads, but ads are how we basically have a podcast. It's, it's called capitalism, which along with baptism are two of your favorite isms, right, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> and so it's capitalism. One of the uh, one of the groups that's been with us from the beginning uh, is a company called Keeps. And uh, I've seen them a lot of ads on television, too. Basically, um, 
they want you to keep your hair, and uh, it's a way to be able to do that and have it come to you, uh, which is really good. So they've got a good product. Basically, you go online. Um, they're going to you know, get some information for you, make sure this is right for you. You buy it. They ship it straight to your door. You don't have to go anywhere else, a doctor or drugstore or anything else. So it's a it's a good deal. You go to keeps.com, K-E-E-P-S.com, slash door, you get 50% off your first order for the hair loss treatment. So keeps.com slash door and keep your hair. So as I was saying, so we, we, we rush over to the woman and, and Anne says, why are you crying with the micro big mic? Why are you crying? And she, she looks at us and she goes, I just hope I live long enough to live in a house like this. Uh-oh. <laughs> your narrative just was yes. swirling around yes. the ball, right? Yeah, we're going, right. Oh, right. <laughs> and opposing her were two environmentalists, one from Switzerland and one from Belgium, two rich kids. Rich women. Rich women. Too much time on their hands. Yeah. They, they, needed, to, they needed all their, let's just say they needed all their uh, enthusiasms that they weren't getting. And, uh, Whoa, Phelan. Um, you do know what podcast you're on here, right? <laughs> 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 they needed distractions, I will say. I, 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 that's my uh, analysis. But of it. it was really horrible. So you had these two foreigners, two outsiders. Rich. Who, rich outsiders who in their own lives had never known anything but gorgeous homes and warm water and indoor bathrooms and all that lovely stuff. And they spent their careers traveling around to places like this place called Russia, Montana, and stealing and destroying the dreams of a village. And so we went around the village, found everyone was supportive of the mine. Everyone loved the Canadians. Everyone loved the opportunity that this was going to lend them. That was going to allow them, their children would get to stay in the village. And, you know, yeah. like when I say, like think about us last night with all the f- lovely kids around, all the grandkids around, how beautiful that is. Here was a situation where that could have happened and that was stolen from that village so, by two outsiders. And basically, as, all the young people had to go to Spain to work, had to leave home to Greece, work because there was no work in the area. As, 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 as journalists, we then had to say, whose story are we telling? Are we telling, is it important for us to tell the story of the environmentalist, the plucky environmentalist fighting the big company, or tell the story of the 86-year-old woman who all she wants is an indoor toilet, right? And 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 how it's be? Whose side are you on? What? Where is? We were who, by the who's way. Who's the victim here? But by the way, yeah. I think we were also. I I I because we were kind of lefty. Um, and I think when you when you see capital, what capitalism can do, and you see it like in a real way, and you see this lady, and you think, that lady wants to sell what she owns, to have this beautiful life with this lovely home. And then you have come along and you're going to take that away from her. It's like, I actually think it was very easy for us to think, hello, excuse me here. What, I- what is going on here? And we, I actually remember thinking, oh, my God, we're going to tell the whole world about this incredible mining company, that mining actually is a great thing. It offers, op- offers all these opportunities. We're going to win all kinds of Pulitzer Prizes. Yes. That's back in the day when I was innocent. <laughs> but I went up, uh-huh. we, we went up, we went up a mountain one way, I can tell you that, and we came down a mountain another but way. You're right. We, realizing so when, when did you get burned out on this left-wing ideology? That happened on that mountaintop. Basically, you mean, you mean in Russia, Montana, we, we came down and realized who, you know, because most people, when they go to college and stuff like that, that whole thing of being on the side of the oppressed, right, of, on the poor and all of that. And it's like, well, actually, I, I, it's very clear whose side we should be on here is the lady, the older lady from this place who wanted to, to live in a nice warm home and wanted to be close to her grandchildren and children and have opportunities. And it's like. Am I on that lady's side or am I on the side of these two women with too much time on their hands? But also, they, they, they lied. They were lying. And they lied. And we caught them in a couple of lies. And Huge I, uh, lies. And I, and, uh, in my naivety, I phoned up and said, look, you've oh, said yeah. this, That's right. but this is not true because I've checked it out. And uh, and he goes, oh, yeah, we know that. And I'm going, well, are you going to withdraw correct the that? Record. Correct the No, no. The person who wrote that, she's very emotional, but so we don't, we don't want to correct her. And I'm going, like, <laughs> no, sorry. The, the, the truth <laughs> is the you're truth. You're dealing with people's lies. So I think, you know, we definitely... That changed us. And then we made this documentary called Mine Your Own Business, where we took an unemployed miner from the... This is, by the way, this town has been mining. It's Russia, Montana, the Red Mountain. The Romans invaded Romania. And that's why it was called Romania, because the Romans came in. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, because of the gold. The Romans were mining there. So this is a mining village. We took an unemployed miner to other a project in Madagascar, 
on you a mean project. there was enough gold there that the company thought it could be there for a while? Yes. It was, it was oh, not only uh, that, actually. It was the project. biggest the biggest gold mine opportunity in Europe yeah. at the time. Yes. And that mine, by the way, just to let everyone know who's listening, uh, has never opened. And that woman never got and her house. And that woman never got her house, and, never she's got no, her, and she's no longer with she us. She never got her indoor bathroom. And they knew the gold was there. Yeah, oh, there's, no, there's loads gold of gold there. there. There's, there's no doubt there. about that. Yes. Yeah. But they but so dupe two these two outsiders stole the dreams of a village. And I can tell you one thing, that's got that got us going. And we've made since then we've made a bunch of documentaries about environmentalism and looking at what environmentalists do. And you know, they're really good at lying. They're good at terrorizing people with stuff that's not true. So they tell things like oh, arsenic in the water, oh you're gonna die, oh there'll be earthquakes, oh there'll be this and that. And when you examine it, when you investigate, you find that in the main they're basically they just lie about everything. Because yep. they hate development. That was they how I this idea. you guys was the frack nation, mm-hmm. yeah. which was about fracking. Once yes. you Correct. guys were here, you did a, a great documentary on that. And it came out at the time, I'm sure you guys timed it, where the movie with Matt Damon, which was just... Promised Land. I mean, yeah, 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 the whole thing. So it's just, to me, it's like you guys are now just rebuttals to so many movements, you know, yes. that, that happens. Yeah, and, and it's important to tell the truth. That's right. It really is. And, uh, you know, we we didn't set out to be rebuttals, and I you know <laughs> I quite liked being popular. And when you're you're a lefty, you're quite popular, and it's quite nice, and it's very um, warm and comfortable. Uh, <laughs> That's right. to, to be in that. I've, I've noticed that just watching through the years, I've been at this about forty five, fifty years, just telling people, look, where you know, asking them where the cosmos come from. What do you think? They're like, well, and they'll come up with all these things. You know, there was an explosion. I said, well, what was there? Before that. Yeah, just before that. They <laughs> said, well, nothing. I said, well, how does nothing explode? So we start there. We tell them, but I will have to admit, we have converted our very few left-wingers, they call them. Right? Mm-hmm. Very few. We've converted a few. Mm. Interesting text in John chapter 8. Jesus is talking to some people. They want to kill him. But they've told him they believe in him. But watch what he says. He says, why is my language not clear to you? Because you're unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer. Speaking of, the Bible said there is a devil, there is a God. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. He's a liar, and this is interesting, and the father of lies. Mm-hmm. So when Jesus ran up on him, being the mistake-free person, God in a human body, which is wild, <laughs> you look at that and you say, whoa, <laughs> well, uh, say whoa all you want to, but as I mentioned earlier, our calendar, even in Ireland, s- says he was here. You count backwards, mm. last year, 2019, 2018, count back, you'll get to year one. That's the year Jesus showed up. <clears throat> well, I would think the person that your calendar, no matter where you are on the earth, <laughs> is based on one individual, I would at least investigate him. Yeah, that's very <laughs> Pretty good. thoroughly. That's yeah. very good. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's, remember that story about the journalist who, who, who decided to investigate to disprove the existence of God and yeah. then ended up realizing, oops. least trouble. <laughs> yeah. 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 He, he, he was an atheist. And in fact, I just talked to him. I, I was with him last week. Uh-huh. And now he's written all these wonderful books because mm. the best way to refute something is somebody that's come out of it. So he understands the tactics of atheism. Mm. I was saying the same thing that I went to Romans 1 because you were talking about environmentalism. And again, that thought process has been around. These are 2,000-year-old letters. But it said they exchanged. They didn't love God and what he created but they fell in love with the with the creation itself and then rose it above. Mm-hmm. And that's the environmentalism. That is I the mean, environment. it is exactly. a religion yes. all yes. in its own. And yes. it's all about things that they think they're doing good, yes. but instead they wind up being destructive and lie, you yeah. know, I mean, through their teeth. Here's a, here's a uh, one, one to remember. Hang on, Dan. Let's, say, let's take a quick break before we read that. So one of my and Jace's favorite um, advertisers uh, on our podcast and sponsors is a company called Helix Mattresses. 
And uh, we just got one. Um, Lisa and I bought one ourselves that we're going to be trying out because I hear Jace bragging about it so much, so I want to try it. We, Lisa had bought another one, and they'd given you a trial to do it. She bought this before, you know, we knew about Helix. But uh, and but I wake up with a backache every day, you know, so I was like, well, this ain't going to work. So uh, I can't wait to get it in. Uh, they also have another company called Allform, uh, which makes sofas, and I did get one of those, and uh, I made sure Jace didn't get it because he spends too much time on the couch already. And this thing is really comfortable uh, and really good. Uh, Lisa and I love it. She got it in her little pastel colors that she likes because she likes beach stuff. Uh, you, and so if you're thinking, well, wait a minute, I, you know, you get a couch, you know, what if I don't like it? Well, they give you a hundred days to decide. And then they'll come get it, you know, and, and go back to them. So you get 100 days. That's over three months to try it out. And they have a warranty called a forever warranty. It's literally forever. So something happens to it, uh, they'll fix it or get you another one. So you go to allform.com slash unashamed. That's allform.com slash unashamed. And you get 20% off your order for being a unashamed listener. So check them out. You'll like it. For all the people who are running around saying, we're going to save the planet. We're going to save the planet. Let's see. Uh, your throne, O oh God, will last forever and ever. Righteous to be the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions. He's talking about Jesus. He also says, in the beginning, O oh Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth. And the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a scroll, like a garment. They'll be changed, but you remain the same, and your years will never end. The writer of Hebrews said, you're not going to save it. He's going to do away with it and mm -hmm. give you another one. That's Peter over there. New heavens, new earth. Mm -hmm. Well, the first one got there somehow. Yep. I don't think it made itself. That would be asking a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't see how nothing could have made it. So I've just run into a deal where I'm saying, you know what? If this is true, being the wild story that it is, God becoming flesh, removing our sin on a cross, <laughs> guaranteed we could be resurrected and have a glorified body that never cries, no tears, no pain, and we live on and on and on. You think about it, we all started out rather small inside a female. <laughs> that was quite the process to get us there. <laughs> From nothing, <laughs> you, you don't exist, and all of a sudden, bing, and you're, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> with um, that's and, pretty and, amazing. And, and and the other thing is the incredible thing is that from that whatever it, and it's smaller than that obviously, um, everything about you is there written already. All everything, the every code. weird thing and about you. And there's no you. one on earth like you. No one. Well, thanks be to God for that. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to talk about because um, it's, it's interesting. So you guys obviously came out of being more left than right. Hmm saw these things and kind of came to awareness. Mm. I'm assuming, although I don't know this, because some of that I didn't know about the Romania, um, that you got, were you pro-choice in terms of your early thinking? Because cause it's interesting, we met, and you guys work on a project called Guys Nail, mm -hmm. and I think the movie had had just come out, or was about to, when we first yeah. met, and then you were doing a book, yes. which mm -hmm. I wrote the forward for your book. So we became friends through the process. So it's one of the most, when when you guys asked me to, to do the forward, when I read the book, it's it, I've never read anything quite like it. it <laughs> I was I was angry and sad at the same yeah. time. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. as angry as I've ever been and as sad as I've ever been reading the story that you guys put together in the book about Kermit Gosnell. So I, I want you to speak to that a little bit about how that changed. That was more in your evolution yeah. too, and exactly yeah. what you saw from the life perspective. Yeah. I, I think you know. I think our. I, I, th I think I hadn't thought an awful lot about abortion, but I think the default position for most people in uh, in Europe is, is is kind of pro choice. And by the way, pro choice sounds good. Like I mean, I like Costco, right? <laughs> you know, you like choice. America is great because you're gonna you know, you know it's not, the stores are big and there's loads of choice. So choice sounds really good. <laughs> and 
So we kind of came across this story kind of by accident about Kermit Gosnell. And Phelan was in Philadelphia, heard about this court case. And we were actually promoting our Frack Nation documentary at the time and traveling around or whatever. And he hears about this, goes down into this courthouse. And there are people giving evidence of what they've seen that happened in this um, this house of horrors, as it was called. Um, and they, it's an abortion clinic. This abortion clinic. Philadelphia. Run by this guy called uh, Kermit Gosnell. But people are giving evidence, but also on front of the jury, they projected images of the children. Like they had these photographs. Yes. And they were blowing up the size of that. <coughs> and I have covered the Northern Ireland troubles. I have, you know, I have seen it all. I thought I'd never seen anything like this. I'd never heard evidence like this before in my life of, of, of the killing of Babies, Dead born children. alive. Yep. And yeah. as Phelan says, one of the most shocking things was he looked behind him and there were all these, they, they'd actually, they, they actually selected a really large courtroom because they expected all the journalists from around the world are going to come to this because it's going to be huge, right? Because this is an extraordinary, this man is on trial for murdering children, for murdering babies who are born alive and he cut their necks with a scissors. And he did this hundreds did of thousands of times. Thousands he's America's times. biggest serial killer. So, yep. fa- so, they, so they, rightfully so, without any kind of, to do with pro-life or, or any of that pro choice they just thought, well, this is an incredible story. Yeah. If it bleeds, it leads. This is the kind of thing, this is Again, a news story. journalists. You know, journalists, right? right? <laughs> and guess what happens? So Phelan is sitting there in the courtroom, looks around, and there are basically all these empty benches where the journalists should be. There are actually more people in this room now than there were journalists at that trial. Right, and that is an f- actual fact. And to me, uh, so I I came back to Los Angeles, and I think when you move from liberalism out of liberalism, I think for a lot of people, the last thing to go was abortion. Funny enough, because it's it's such a moral thing. It's such it's hard to accept that you might have been in favor of it in the past, yeah, right? right? For a lot of people, yeah, so, when liberals and rednecks meet, most of the time there's friction. <laughs> We're rednecks. <laughs> oh, well, we worked that one out. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> so I, I came home uh, and I said to Anne and Magda, "This is our story. This is this is." And, and they said, "No, nah, no, we do, we don't want to do abortion. We don't want to do abortion." So I ordered the transcripts of the trial, and when they came, I told Anne and Magda, "Read this, right?" And they started reading it, and they came back and says. We're doing this. There's nothing else we want to do except for this. We're doing this. Because what was extraordinary was, and again, this is kind of, you know, I mean, out of out of extreme evil, very good things can come, bizarrely, I think. And in this case, the thing that was good was that people are asked, there's, there's one thing about, hey, what do you think about this, Alan? And you say whatever. There's a difference between you say, answering that or me saying under oath. Put your hand on that Bible and yeah. tell me the truth. And by the way, and if you don't tell the truth, we could put you in prison for a while. That's right. So people behave differently in a court of law and they'll tell the truth. So people were asked, well, what did you see? What did it look like? What did you hear? What did... And so people gave this incredible evidence. And one of the really amazing moments, and this is the reason we got, this is what really motivated us. So at, the, at this trial, the, the really important thing to explain to the jury was the difference between legal abortion and murder. So they needed to make a distinction because obviously abortion is legal here. And in fact, a lot of people don't know this. Abortion in, in the United States is legal up to nine months. Perfectly legal in the United States. So this jury needed to understand the difference. So the way to do that is they got a good abortionist to come under oath. Tell me how you do it when you do it well. Tell us a good, good abortion. A, tell me what a good abortion is. Describe to these people here what a good abortion looks like. And so you have someone, this, is not, this, isn't a pro, this isn't a pro-life rally. This is someone, under, you tell me now, you do this for a living. Tell me how to do it. Well, actually, and that woman, and that woman described, and that was, well, that was a, okay. First of that. all, first That's of all, so they said, you know, <coughs> she's an expert, he's an expert witness. Let's establish your expert bona fides, right? And uh, they said, how many abortions have you done? In your career. In your career. And the answer was? The answer was 40,000. And the jury gasped and it was the only time in the trial look at Alan with his mouth yeah. 40,000 <laughs> 40,000 40,000 uh, so that's ju- one doctor that's, that's one like, doctor it's like a factory so the jury was looking at pictures of dead babies with, na- with wounds in the back of their neck and they were sitting there like this the only time they gasped during the whole trial was when that doctor said that because they'd never considered it this industrial process that people had made careers. They thought it was something legal and rare and safe and all that. Yeah. And now they go, someone has done 40,000. 40, we, we put it in the movie. 
But we, we cut it down to 30,000 because we thought no one would believe anyone had done 40,000 abortions, right? You know, because we didn't want to destroy, we didn't want people to go, that's not true. Yeah. So we, we cut it to 30 because, you know, who, nobody would believe that. So under oath, 40,000. And then. But, but basically, she was asked, you know, and so she was asked to describe abortion. Um, and, you know, people were just completely aghast. And we know because we've interviewed members of the jury, nothing shocked them more than the description of a good abortion, of a legal abortion. And it's like, they're sitting there going, and in fact, the jury were very, very, they were hand-selected not to be pro-life. They were hand-selected to be either pro-choice or kind of neutral. And by the way, there's no neutrality on this issue. That's right. You're really, you're pro-abortion or you're anti-abortion. But basically, Hang they're sitting now, there. Let's take a quick break. So a lot of times when people are just starting out, um, new, you know, into into building their lives, uh, they don't have debt, which is a good thing, but they also don't have credit you know, because they haven't, you know, they don't have any debt. So these things kind of work hand in hand. So you need your points to be higher uh, to be able to be able to get some, you know, a loan or whatever. So the average person uh, gets 97 points immediately if you go to ScoreMaster, which is one of our sponsors. And so it's pretty amazing. Um, on average, it's 61 points in 20 days or less. So if, if you're about to, you know, buy a car, buy a boat, buy a house, uh, you're going to need this uh, to, to get your loan. So you can go to their website, scoremaster.com slash fill. You roll in just a few minutes and you see how many points you can add to your credit score. So if you need that, scoremaster.com slash fill. And check these guys out and get your points moved up just a little bit more so you can be able to get that loan. So they're sitting there and they're hearing this and and they were profoundly shocked because for them, they're like, well, there's really no difference between a legal abortion and what this guy did. So what he and what he did was he filled these women up with a thing called Cytotec, which meant that they dilated. The babies fell out. And then they just came with the scissors and cut the back of the neck, which killed which kill the babies. But some of the babies were alive. And this is one of the worst parts of the story. You know, people would see them and the child would be trying to. And it, I mean, it just off. I, now I know things that I wish I, you know, I got an education that, that more people need this education. Um, and you guys actually interviewed Gosnell in prison. Oh, yeah. We went to prison and we were there for, <laughs> yeah, for can, three hours. Can I just say to people, the movie's Gosnell and... But it's PG thirteen. You know, we've, oh, we've taken that's a, a lot point. of the horrific stuff out of the movie because we wanted as many people. But we kept the book, that. The book is not PG thirteen. The big book is tough. You know, it was yeah. tough. It was yeah. a tough read. But yes, we went to visit Gosnell in prison, and uh, and I've been to prisons before visiting uh, murderers, uh, IRA murderers, and all that. And Did he like seem it. disturbed by it all? Not even slightly. So I'll tell you what it's like to meet him. It's literally. It's 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 he is. Uh, he smiles. He's very uh, quiet, quiet spoken, it, it, and it very like correct. He's very tall. He's a he's an African American. He's in his seventies. He's very well made. You know, he's very square shouldered, very tall, and it was one of those weird things because obviously we had spent an enormous amount of time working on the book and working, going through the evidence and going through all the stuff that came out of you know the photographs and all of that. And speaking to everyone, we the journal, we had, you know we'd spoken to the detective Jim Wood, who's a complete hero of ours, um, and the ADA and all these kind of people. Mm. And so then you're with this man, and it's and he's like, and he's putting a hand out, and you're thinking, oh my god, I'm going to shake this hand. And then like he's all about his hands, and he's all about his feet. And one of the things that people and some of your audience probably know this, but he has a thing about feet. So he he cut the feet of some of these babies and kept them in jars, jars and labeled them and labeled them so when the cops raided the clinic the first night that they when the first raid that they did with Jim Wood there they find this cabinet in the same place where people have their peanut butter and jello sandwiches right there's a cabinet filled with these jars of children's feet and in one case two two little feet and and, and they're like looking at this and thinking what like what is this? Is this normal? Because people don't know, and it's like, is that normal? Of course, it's not normal. That is not normal to do that. Which you called him a serial killer. That's exactly what you think. Yes. Of. Well, in, in the movies, you know, they they keep mementos <laughs> of, 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 and oh, yeah. uh, and oh, yeah. but he. That's he, the most brutal story I've ever heard. Oh, it's, well, here's what here's what made me so that made me super sad. What made me super angry that you bring out in the book and in the movie, but more in the book, is that. There was a Republican governor yes. at the time when this was all going down. Tom Ridge. Tom Ridge. And basically what they <laughs> what they did was just back away from all abortion clinics. So nobody is checking on him. So he's just running this yeah. horror shop. 
it's filthy, it's nasty, there's cats running around all over the place. And these women are coming in, and one woman actually died there. Two women died. Two women died there. And so, which nothing ever happened to it, because basically a Republican governor said, we're not going to deal yes. with abortion yes. in any way. And so he, so there was no control over this. He was able to do this for all these years. And what infuriated, I'm still mad about it to this day, is that you'll hear Hillary Clinton or somebody else talk about women's health mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. as, as oh, yeah. if somehow it's about helping women. And this guy was running this butcher shop. And, and by the way, all those kids he was killing, half of them were women. Oh, yeah. So, or soon to be women. So and, and an enormous number of them, a very high percentage of them, were African American children. Right. Um, who are forever lost. And, and that's what I thought. I just thought the system failed all these people so yes. miserably. Yes. Supposedly. The last stat I saw on it, it had like African Americans, 18 million. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I told you guys, I, I told our audience that the last two years in a row, there have been more African American children. Killed in New York City since that since yes. the Supreme then we're born. Court, yes. yeah. since the Supreme Court yeah. rule it was you have and, the right to choose eighteen million. And, and Gosnell he, he he Gosnell believes he's innocent. History will vindicate him. He's very affable. He he behaved like he just come in from a round of golf. Hey, hey hello, and he sits down and. You know, we're sitting, we're sitting there, and it's, and I thought it was going to be through plastic glass, and of course, and it's like he's he's actually sitting closer to us than you guys are, right? Yes, right and now. we're Anne and I are sitting like this, and he comes in, and of course, any decent person would sit opposite me. He comes in, and he sits opposite Anne, yeah. and through the whole interview, he keeps going, "Let me tell you, Anne," and putting his hand on her knee. <laughs> Just <laughs> creepy, right? Creepy, and, and and Anne's looking at it, and but see, as journalists, you know. As journalists, we're not there to be offended, right? I mean, I hate this when journalists go, oh, the police shouted at me or the police did this. You're there in the middle. You're there covering things. It's a dirty, messy it's your job. job. Jo- it's your job to, to listen to this guy. It's our job to listen. You know, most Americans don't have the opportunity or couldn't handle that. That's right. We're, our job is to go in and talk to this mass murdering serial killer and get, try and understand how it happened and try and bring people information. Right. So... If he puts his hand and by on, the way, on, on, on my knee or Anne's <coughs> knee, it doesn't matter. We'll suck it up. And, and, and we get were on the, the side. And we were on the side of the angels, you know. Um, and he's there, and he is. I mean, he is. He has. You know, they talk about affect. You know, this thing of affect. So he has the as film says he has the affect of just having just had a cocktail or something. He's got this kind of super relaxed. You'd almost feel like you were in a kind of a country club with him. That's that's the way he's behaving. And he's, he's very super cultured. unaffected by anything, you know, and we, we let him talk quite a bit at the beginning to let him warm up or whatever. And then we started asking him very direct questions and you could see him. He dropped he dropped his eyes and went, oh, you know about that. Um, and this is kind of how we and he would. But he, but he was incre- I mean, he's just a liar. Yeah, he's just a liar. I think and about the verses <clears throat> that talk about the <coughs> conscience is seared with a hot iron. Oh, uh, you know, uh, God giving over to depravity, which you earlier read, and that that's yep. that's this guy. Let's uh, let's take one last break. So we're in our last segment here. Yes. So I, I wanted to basically we've kind of followed your career, and it, but it's also interesting how that's put you on the path you've been on. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I loved about you guys right off the bat was the authenticity and. Like you guys, I, I mean, I, I was just seeing a lack of authenticity, especially in journalism, and it, now it's just off the rails. I mean, it's just we've seen the last four years. It's just mm-hmm. open rooting for one side. Yes. And uh, so, uh, but one of the things I love about what you guys do, and you did it with Gosnell, and now since then, it's a, we got verbatim theater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it's like now, Phelan and Ann have this great brilliance to. It, it's not like it's our opinion. They take transcripts. They take a Senate hearing committee or whatever, and they just take those. So it's just straight someone's testimony and then turn that into documentaries or plays or whatever. So you did one on Ferguson um, th- that I was able to attend. Yeah, was, you guys came to New York. Yeah, which yeah. was really interesting because you had these actors that totally are in the tank like left-wingers, but they're being, but they're acting. They need a job, right? So they're they're reading these texts about Ferguson because these guys showed from the context of all the transcripts that was just complete BS, which we knew that they never did this. They never put their hands. There's up. never hands up. Yeah, you know, don't yeah. shoot all yeah. that. So so Ferguson was wonderful in the sense that the grand jury transcripts were released. So you had forty eyewitness accounts plus the forensics, and it was a minute by minute account of the last minutes of Michael Brown's life, and you had these. 
brilliant actors reading only, and we didn't add any drama, any details right. to it. But they were only reading actual. And by uh, the way, just to say for anyone who's listening who'd really like to watch the Ferguson play, it's available for free on YouTube, and yeah. they just go to Ferguson Play. Dot I dot. think put in Ferguson Play and you'll find but it. But to show you how how powerful it is, <coughs> we we opened it in LA. Nine of the actors walked out during rehearsal because they couldn't handle the truth because the media told them it's all hands up, don't shoot, and when they read the script they were going i don't want any part of this this doesn't match what i believe <laughs> and i'm going well this is the words of, of eyewitness many of them african-american don't you want to give these people a voice and the answer is no they didn't that's yes, right and then you know so we, we we did that and then we have, the latest one is obamagate uh where to tell him how to get when to he lies he speaks his native language hmm. they they they're given over to him you see what i'm saying yeah. yes yeah that's that and thirty thousand foot view and that's why Tell, yeah. tell folks how to get to Obamagate because it's fantastic. Obamagatemovie.com. Okay. And, uh, and it's free on YouTube as well. Obamagatemovie.com. You know, so Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, the two FBI agents, the FBI lovebirds, um, <laughs> their, their text messages have been released and their Senate testimony has been released and so has Comey and Brennan's. So we put together and it's only, it's it's kind of a, it's a brilliant drama actually yeah. because it's kind of part love story, part teen, teen <laughs> embarrassing teen text, but part deep story. <laughs> State conspiracy, and it's got this yeah. weird. So, one minute they're 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 texting lovey dovey texts to each other, and the other next time they're planning how to bring down candidate Trump and how to bring down President Trump. So it's funny, sad, and infuriating. And Dean Cain plays Peter Strzok, and Christy Swanson plays Lisa Page. And but it's, it's quite scary to realize this is how these people spoke, and these are not just regular FBI agents that you'd find you know over the country. These are the top ranking FBI agents and basically you have Peter Strzok saying to his lover Christy Swanson uh, to, to, to Lisa Page um, we're not going to he's not going to become president we're no gonna. we're going to stop it and that's his own words that's his own words that's his own honesty that's him telling the truth about what his intentions were and obviously we've all lived and obviously to, to find to, out about to that to prove your point wasn't Strzok the one that uh, interviewed Flynn yes he yes. was a part yes. of it so I mean, you're talking about their guy that they send in for for yeah. anything big, I mean, you know, and, and that whole thing was just hatched out. And, and, and you can see in the text message they spent weeks editing and, as he said, polishing the Flynn three hundred two, which is their 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 transcript of his interview. And I'm going, why are you editing and polishing the transcript of an interview? Why couldn't you record it? Why couldn't I mean, you record? You know, I, Strzok I mean, was a master of deception because when he went before the Congress. They didn't lay a glove on him. No. Yeah. I mean, he he slippery. was a Very slippery. great liar. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's what they he all had it down. Of course, yes. many people as he rope a dope through his career. I mean, he had it down to a art form. Yeah. But it's amazing to me, by the way. You know, we're kind of like sort of laughing there, Phil. You know, it doesn't like technology and all of this, right? Well, it's interesting, Phil. Actually, the FBI don't either. So the FBI, <laughs> well, in, they interviewed somebody as serious as General Flynn. And they just didn't think, oh, you know what? We can record this with a phone, <laughs> with a tape recorder, with a camera. But no. So maybe, I don't know, Phil, you know, may, are you in the, are you at the, uh, with the <laughs> FBI? Because <laughs> you're on something there. I'm you're careful who I run with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we have cameras and recorders everywhere. Yes. But when you're, that's the deal. When you're, when you're not trying to shape narratives and yeah. create your own truth, which is what these people yes. do. Everybody we've been talking about here that you guys have done these documentaries on and plays, these now are contributors, news contributors. Yes. Every one of these yes. guys have a gig now, yeah, yeah. Yes. mostly CNN or yeah. MSNBC. That's right. That's right. So think about it. You, you're a polished liar, and you tried to basically have a coup mm -hmm. in the United States of America, and your reward is not jail. Yeah, It's a, it's a, a good gig yes. be, to continue the lies yes. with all your sources. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's really incredible when you yes. think about how yeah. this thing has worked yes. itself around. Yeah. Which is you amazing. want a scary text? Yes. Uh, uh, scary written, text. We do. We do. We're ready for scary text time. <laughs> written 2,000 years ago. Uh, uh, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, wonders, and every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. Now listen to this. They perish because they refuse to love the truth hmm. and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion 
so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. Yeah. So they, you can get to a point to where God just gives you over to it and he sends you a delusion and the delusion is I'm lying and I know I'm lying it's my truth. It's my truth. Oh, it's my, my truth. My truth oh, is yeah. my truth. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So that's why when Jesus rolled in, he yes. said, I am the truth, yes. mistake yeah. free. So on yeah. one side, you have it's the age old struggle between good and evil. Mm -hmm. It's been there ever since mankind arrived. Yeah, they believe they're good own and lives. evil. Yeah. And I would say, wouldn't you agree that most journalists now? believe that this whole anti-Trump and, yeah. and hiding this stuff and not yeah. talking about it, the whole Hunter Biden thing, yes. that just let's don't talk about that, is they view themselves as doing a good thing. Yes. Mm. So oh, yeah. It's a moral crusade. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So the, end, funny, they think the end justifies the means because they're, they're, what, what the end is, 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 you know... Is good. Is Biden. Yeah. And I mean, the Hunter Biden thing, for a journalist, and then we talked about being journalists earlier, like we, we have a different brain, right? You know, when we see misery, we, we get excited. No, I don't mean that, but it's... You kind of do, though. You kind <laughs> Do. You know, and f I mean, there's so much in the Hunter Biden thing. I mean, you know, for even for these liberal journalists like this. And that came and went. And no, but it I, never I, came. I, they yeah. never came. They I never, mean, they it, never reported on except, that. Yes. Except no. for the guys on Fox. That was yeah. the only guys you even heard anything yes. about. Or yeah. we wouldn't even know yeah. that there was a Hunter and, Biden. And then, you have, and then you have Twitter, you know, where you have, you know, Dorsey, who basically wouldn't allow the New York, t the New York Post, Post story. Yeah. To be to be transmitted to be broadcast. I mean, these are these are extraordinary people, and they have an incredible amount of power. And this is kind of what. So what we kind of do is we tell stories that that the media won't. And what won't I love tell. the way you guys do it, uh, and we'll wrap with this. So you do that by going straight to the people. Yes. I mean, most of the, your projects are funded by people. Yeah. yeah. Crowd, oh, oh, that's yeah. true. Crowdfunding. Gosnell, we we crowdfunded that to make the movie. We raised two point three million dollars from thirty thousand people. Yeah. Uh, it was the most Quite successful. Quite an extra, like an, an amazing story and a beautiful two, people. Two, two people up. from Ireland turn up in America saying, "Give us, trust us to tell this important." And story. they give us more than two million dollars, like randomers. Right. I mean, huh. it's fabulous. <laughs> and and people from Australia, people from all over the world, people were very, very touched and very affected. And people were once they became aware of the Gosnell story and they realized. Why has no one told me this? Why yeah. do I not know they this? They got angry. They got really angry and they're like, yeah, we're going to give you money. And people did amazing things. People like sent us $10 a month like for years because it took us a long time to get the film made because, you know, but that's you can what, imagine That's one thing Hollywood. I think I was drawn to you guys. I mean, Lisa and I are, are dear friends with both of you, but it is, is, is that truth seeking because that's what we do. You know, we do it more from a biblical, spiritual mm -hmm. perspective. You do it more on a right out there on the front line. So I love that about you guys. Uh, the, your podcast is called The Scoop. It's called The Ann and Phelan Scoop. But everyone, Ann and Phelan Scoop, and it's on YouTube and everywhere else. But if anyone wants to find out more about us, you can go to the Unreported Story Society dot com. Unreported Story Society And we'll flash com. that on the screen as well. Thanks so, so much. So glad to have you here. I think it's time for us to go eat some. I stuff. was going to say, it's time for lunch. <laughs> it's I want to eat. for lunch. Let's go do it. <laughs> Let's Let do it. Let me go see if I can get it Thank together. You. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.